Hi everyone, so it's Sonia and Neil, but really it should be Neil and Sonia, Nia, yeah. and as I'm sure you know by now, and um, we've been away for a lovely break, haven't we, and it was um, great because it gave us an opportunity to read, listen to podcasts, there was a really great summit on which had loads of speakers, so we uh, did a few similar things and different things, so I thought tonight I'd um, share with Neil one of the things that I learnt about which is a new thing for me and share with you guys as well um, and see what Neil thinks about it and you can so comment So it's the first time well. I've heard about this so this is as new for me as it is for you so. So we'll I don't know much about Ayurvedic medicine or Ayurvedic living apart from the fact that a few years ago I had a lovely Ayurvedic massage and I remember the consultant sat me down um, I had to fill out a questionnaire and it identified which dosha I was. Um, so I was intrigued at this talk because it talked about the different doshas and I thought actually I'd like to learn a bit more about that. So what it was, it was a, a talk by Lisa Coffey um, and you can, you can look her up online. Um, her surname is spelled C-O-F-F-E-Y, Lisa Coffey. And uh, she's an expert in Ayurvedic living and diet and things like that. Um, so what she said was, which I didn't know, Ayurvedic medicine is based on the five elements. Now I've always thought of the five, the four element, elements being wind, water, earth and fire, like the astrological signs. But with Ayurvedic medicine there's five, so they also include a fifth one, which is space. And I think rather than space, universe space, I think they mean by that space in between cells in our bodies and in between things. But it's also, it's probably also about you know, space and the universe as well. So that's quite interesting, the first thing I didn't realise. Um, and it's very much about the connection to nature. So Ayurvedic um, kind of philosophy is about how we connect to nature. And I guess how we identify with all of those five elements and can bring those into our life to get better balance. But what she talked about is there are three pillars in Ayurvedic medicine and really they try and apply that to lifestyle um, in order to get balance. So the three pillars are sleep, activity and food. Okay. So, uh, I'm into all of those three, yeah, you can do all those three. <laughs> so, I guess it's quite sensible, really, because we all need those things, don't mm. we? Um, and so you've got three pillars, and then you've got three doshas, so you've got three body types. And it's quite fun after listening to this, I was a bit naughty playing my game as I normally do, sat by the pool watching people. But you can start to kind of put people <laughs> into the dosha categories. I know you shouldn't really pigeonhole people, but you know, it's quite fun to do. Um, so the three doshas are kapha, which I think is spelt K-A-P-H-A. -A. I think that's right. Look at my notes here. Um, and that's what I think I am. So for all of you watching, there are lots of questionnaires you can do on um, the websites. If you just type in Ayurvedic medicine or questionnaire, you can do a questionnaire, but Lisa Kofi has one on her website. So, so I think I'm Kaffa, and then the other one is Pitta. It's a bit like Pitta bread, <laughs> but it's spelled P-I-T-T-A, and I think you might be Pitta from the descriptions I've seen. Mm. And then there's Vata, which is V-A-T-T-A. -T -T I think I've spelled those right. So Vata, Pitta, and Kapha. And each uh, body type has certain um, properties or kind of characteristics, but it and it can help you. You're, you're a mixture of all of them, but you'll be dominant in one of them. And by knowing your dominant dosha, you can um, balance your lifestyle with the three pillars, so food, activity, and sleep better. Because the different doshas have different kind of resonance with how long you sleep, what type of sleep, what, what time in the night, what type of food, and what type of activity you do. So you can match those three pillars better to your type once you know your type. Um, so in general, 
Vata people, and you might know some Vata people when I describe them. It was good, she, Lisa was saying, um, if you were to draw an analogy between a Vata body type or person and a plant or something in nature, it would probably be bamboo or, or a plant that would be long and kind of, kind of elegant, lots of space around it, kind of move with the wind. Um, it might be a gazelle if it was an animal, you know, mm. something like that. So you tend to see people who are lean, often tall, not always, but slim and tall. I always refer to people like this, so you can tell they're yogis because they always look really lean and tall. Or runners. And, or runners as well. Mm. Um, and typically they will enjoy um, concepts and ideas, have quite a lot of energy. They might have difficulty in sleeping at night because they've got so much kind of going on and opportunities and potentials and ideas and things. Um, yeah, that was, that was a general, a very quick but general idea of Vata. Then, and they probably burn off food quite quickly as well, have high metabolisms, that type of thing. And have quite a, um, could be highly strung or kind of like you feel they're quite wired, like lots going on. Um, then you've got Pitta, the Pitta dosha, and um, that's uh, fire based. So fire in the belly, that kind of thing. Um, now they, I, I'm trying to remember now because I didn't write so many notes. I think they tend to be more physically strong or sturdy looking, if I'm right. Um, and they can be quite serious and they can, they, they tend to be workaholics. That was the key thing with pitters. Um, so actually the thing that they need to so, balance. So which out of those three or four things then are you saying? Because you say, oh, I think you might be pitter. Oh, you're sturdy and strong. All, the, all those things. Yeah. Okay. But you are also a workaholic, no, aren't you? I do like working. You do like working mm. and you get on a mission, don't yeah. you? But interestingly, they said that pitters can really benefit from having more fun. So it's not to say you don't have fun, but I think, like you're always saying, that you want to go, you love the waves and surfing and going to the beach. So I'm guessing that's your balance. And when mm. you haven't done much nature walking or biking or surfing, you probably feel a bit unbalanced. Yeah. Would that be true? Yeah, totally true. So that's an example of where, when you know your dosha type, you can kind of bring in the balance to it. And then the final one, which I think is more me, Kaffa, you're going to laugh now, because they say Kaffa people tend to be a bit slower, which I am in the mornings. I'm really slow. I mean, I am a mixture, you've got to remember. I have got yeah, some yeah. pitta and, yeah, and vata in me as well, but I'm really awful in the mornings. I take ages to get going. My body isn't really awake until I get back from the school run. Um, yeah, I'm, and, and slower in general to do things, more considered. They tend to be apparently, I'm not gonna say I am this, but apparently kind of loving, warm, supportive personalities who will typically take roles like um, teachers, nurses, counselors, guides, that type of thing. Um, and you tend to find their body shape will therefore be softer and rounder um, and they have a slow metabolism and they love sleeping, which is me. <laughs> mm. um, and they don't like waking up in the morning. So it's quite interesting. So what they need is actually to balance it with more activity, which I, to be fair, I always have done. I think I worked out when I was younger that I needed more activity. Um, but yeah, it probably, I notice actually when I don't go to the gym as regularly, I slip into this more lethargic, way of being and it's not healthy because it feels nice but actually it's not really healthy so again it's that it's that balance thing going on so those are the the three pillars the food activity and sleep and then you've got the three doshas you've got to identify which dosha you are and then you'll have a, a you'll have a bit of everything but you'll have a dominant one and then you can start to balance things so what lisa eventually went on to say which i'll, I'll say in a minute is a typical day so Ayurvedic philosophy says that taking all those things into consideration, there seems to be, in their philosophy, an ideal way to live your life daily. And they use the doshas. So what they suggest, and this is what, in a minute I'll stop talking, and I'm going to hear about what you think about all of this. Mm. They suggest that the kapha part of the day which is the, the me bit, the slower bit, 
is waking in the morning, which makes logical sense because you, you know, you're just coming to, that we should all wake about six o'clock in the morning. And they said, obviously, the time differences across the world are a bit of give and take, but generally that's because that's when the sun rises on average. So you're, you're connecting with nature's rhythms again, which is what Ayurvedic is about. And so you should wake, and in an ideal world, you might have, you know, do a bit of stretching, a bit of yoga, have a shower, have some breakfast, reflect on the day ahead, do some intention setting. Um, so it's very much, you might even read, I mean, obviously we've got jobs to go to, but this isn't an ideal world. So you would actually spend from 6 a.m. in the morning until 10, easing yourself into the day. Which would be nice if we could all do that. But I guess what we can take from this is that perhaps there's elements that we could all introduce so that the body can unravel from sleep and introduce itself to the day. Mm. Once you get to 10, you then come into the pitta zone, which is the you bit. And this is where you get things done. So it's the achieving bit, the practical bit, get stuff done. Um, so by then you should have unraveled into the day nicely, had some breakfast, etc., and be ready to really achieve lots, you know, so it'd be a good time of day between 10 and two to get the bulk of your actions done, you know, project planning, your phone calls, your, you know, meetings, whatever it is, the doing stuff. Yeah. Ideally have lunch about between 12 and one. And this should be the biggest meal of the day, not in the evening, which is what, as a society in the UK, I think we tend to do more, but the biggest meal of the day. Um, then we move at two o'clock into Vata, two until six in the evening. So they say, ideally you finish work at six o'clock every day. And in that Vata period between two and six, this is where you go into the zone of creativity, ideas and thinking and creating solutions, coming up with solutions. So, and actually that kind of fitted logically for me as well, because once you've done all you're doing, you can kind of reflect on what you've done and then take the learning and apply that learning and come up with ideas. And I don't know that just that part of the day feels like actually if we were all given the choice at work, <laughs> you know, to, to do our creative thinking, that could work quite well, maybe. And then finish at six, and then it starts again. Then you go into kapha again, which is the relaxing part of the evening. So ideally, they was, uh, Lisa was saying, that we should all finish work at six and then start to start winding down for nighttime. So have an evening meal with people you, know, you want to socialize with, maybe go for a walk, um, read a book, you could do some more yoga, you know, things like that. Um, then at 10 o'clock, you go into Pitta. Now, you might be thinking, well, Pitta was the action get done bit. But interestingly, what Lisa Kofi said was the body heals itself the best between 10 and 2 a.m. So the fact that you've gone into Pitta, but you're asleep, you aim to be asleep by 10, means that the body can do its doing. It can do its healing and regenerating and replenishing. And that's really important for the body to do that. And then from two until six in the morning, so we've done a full circle, is Vata, and that's when we dream most. So scientists have proven that anyway. That's when we tend to dream most after 2 a.m. And that is where you can, if you're familiar with the dosha and you plan your your 24 hours like this, you can actually um, kind of zone into that even more and use your dream state as an opportunity to find solutions and ideas. So you can actually use your dreams in a way to intention set. If there's been a thing you've been thinking about or you're not sure about, you can, just before you fall asleep, you can think, okay, I want to dream about that and see what ideas and solutions come up. So I thought that was quite interesting. Um, so that, that's pretty much it. But I thought, I'd never thought about chunking the day or mm. 24 hours down like that before. And obviously I know we all have restrictions of working patterns and things. But Lisa Kofi was saying, well, you can take elements and try and match it as close as you can. Um, so I thought it was quite interesting. 
So I'd be very interested to know what you think. Put some comments in mm. below because it may well be that you've come across this before and you've kind of had experiences or you've tried stuff and it hasn't worked or you've done some stuff and you think, you know, it's been life changing. So, you know, share with it. Comments yeah. below. I mean, for me, there's probably about three things. I should have made some notes as we've done this, but I'll try to remember what they were. Um, the first thing I thought of was other cycles impacting on the three elements mm. and the three doshas and also when we're talking about time scales during the day so cycles that could be because some people are, feel like they're very affected by lunar cycles yeah. other people obviously if, if you're a woman you have cycles every month and going through those cycles i just wonder how they'll impact on this and maybe contribute to or against mm. some of the balance mm. that that you might find um you might also have other things like hormonal imbalance for example that could impact in some of these areas more so than others so that that was my first kind yeah, of thinking is is kind of so, what else um, is there rhythms. Rhythms, yeah, yeah definitely could come into that mm. so there's probably a number of kind of underlying mm. themes and cycles that are happening mm. but this might be a core that kind of runs really true mm. so then as you were talking about that then the next thing i thought of was okay a lot of this then is going to be about really listening and kind of really reflecting on with all that information i mean obviously that's a lot to take on board you might have to watch this a few times to kind of pick up all those pieces but for me i think it's about kind of really listening to how it feels so if i get up and when i do quite regularly get up you know between kind of six and a half six um when i can when i can feel like i've got enough energy to do that but as you say you know that can actually stimulate more energy if you if you do mm. it so for example getting up at six there could be some days and i know you've reflected on this in previous um videos that we've done is that some days you might just not feel like mm. doing that yeah. so if you're really consciously listening this is not something to get obsessed by, mm, I would suggest, mm. but it's probably something to feed and kind of lead how you're coming across that day. It would be quite an interesting experiment to try it for like a month and see mm. you know, what it felt like and whether it was conducive or not to other rhythms, like you say. Mm. I don't, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because to some degree, I the idea of it is appealing because, I don't know, just chunking the day in that way it almost gives you permission to have certain parts of the day for certain things but then there's another side of me that wonders if it's a bit restrictive you know and a bit kind of constraining well um, yeah and I think particularly your point about we've all got and you said it two, two or three times we've all got busy lives mm. um for me there's that and it's an interesting one because I guess I'm in the very fortunate position that with a number of different projects and a number of different clients and, and sort of things that I do, I do have a lot of flexibility. So mm. I can make yeah, those kind of decisions. If you're working very set hours, maybe you're working shift patterns, maybe you don't have the freedom that some of us do have. So I, I totally appreciate that. But I think for me, the thing that came through loud and clear there was this... And I'm going to I'm going to be quite contentious here, and again, put comments in below if you really disagree with me, and you can disagree with me. You will, I'm sure. <laughs> but some of that external pressure, I would argue, could be an excuse, with a small e, because I think it's very, very easy. Now I know there's a few people now watching and saying, hmm, "How dare he say that?" So please comment and, and give us some feedback. But I think with this kind of thing where there is such a huge opportunity to kind of learn and self-develop and really listen to kind of what's going on internally because that's where all this starts you know and we'll talk about this in loads of other sessions and the art of transformative living workshop which we'll come on to in a minute but i think it's really important to m remember that all of this stuff kind of starts from within mm. and i think there's always and often this excuse that i haven't got time i can't get up early enough I haven't got um, you know the, the space in my day to do this. We can all make space and time. Mm. You know, even if you're working shift patterns, stuff, you'll have breaks. So what you choose to do in those breaks, as an example, could be to explore some of this stuff. You're not completely twenty four seven beholden to others. Mm. So I think it's about taking ownership for 
not all, and well, not only as you're saying the waking hours, but actually the sleeping hours as well. And nobody's going to tell you what you can do when you're dreaming. So I think there's a huge opportunity here for kind of being really accountable for some of the stuff that's going well, on wonder, inside you. Picking up what you've just said about other people having more structured nine to five jobs or sh shift working, which feels more limited in its flexibility. But I wonder actually whether this is as much about the practicality of a 24 hour period as um, the way you mentally approach things. So you can have from 10 until two, a busy job where, um, I suppose 10 until it'd be fine if you've got a busy job because that's the pit a bit. Okay, so imagine if you've got a busy job all day, go, 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 doing, 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 even in the afternoon where you're supposed to be in Vata, which is more reflective solutions, ideas, but you're actually having to produce and, and do stuff and make stuff. I guess you, you can, you could still produce stuff and make stuff, but with that intention of problem solving, or could I do this better, or how did that go, and oh, tomorrow when I do that, how could I alter that? You know, you, you could apply the mental attitude mm. of the doshas to your day, couldn't you? Mm. And, and about being aware of if you feel like you're slightly out of sync at certain points in the day, you might sort of think, Do you know, I really don't want to be doing that this afternoon. Mm. And then maybe then stop and reflect, well, why don't I? Because I normally like doing this. But mm. because I'm doing it in the afternoon, is that is there something in that that's mm. impacting on which one I am? You know, and, and is because I am a certain tendency to be one of the three and I, i'm guessing the way that it works is that one is going to be dominant and the other yeah. two are kind of so you get scores i mean after doing the questionnaire you get scores in each category mm. so i think i was 23 kapha 16 pitta and something like eight vata so you you get a you know i mm. mean it is obviously possible i know um lisa kofi said you, it's rare, but you can get some people who are equally split in all three, and that's unusual. But you, but you can. Mm. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the way of determining which one you've got more of, I guess. Mm. Um, mm. So I guess the the questionnaires and as you say, you can Google this and and you know and and find examples of it. So I guess the questionnaires will give you a steer as to which one is most likely to be your dominant one. But then it's going away and actually using that mm. in real life. Because it's all very well knowing that you're mm. one or the other. What does that actually do for you kind of growing and, and self-developing? I think it comes into, okay, so how are you going to use that? Mm. And I think it's going away and then just being really conscious about yeah. how it feels. At certain do you points know anyone that does a similar routine to this currently? I do have a very good friend who I won't name um, for this one because they might not necessarily want this to be mm. public. Um, I think you know who I'm talking about. Um, who has a very, very strict, very strict morning routine. And in fact, and this is really interesting because I must ask actually whether they are aware of this going mm. on because it may well be that they're not but they've actually just done this intuitively mm. um, but they get up at a very set time uh, they do physical activity there's meditation there's reading so there's a you know a real conscious self-development then there's a very very strict juicing regime so this person doesn't have you know sort of toast and stuff to mm. for breakfast and stuff is very very much you know set on very 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 tight nutrition but says this person says they feel amazing as a result Gosh. of it and it sets their day up um and the phrase that they've used is i, I make mornings mine mm. so when they schedule meetings the meetings mm. are from mid-morning onwards or could be in the afternoon so they make that early part of the day they know Ten. this stuff yeah, they so know this stuff <laughs> don't they because but for them, yeah. they really found that this has worked. I'd mm. love to be able to share who it is, but it, w it wouldn't be fair to do that. Um, but they have really, and I, I've kind of listened to this, and again, this is part of my early kind of early morning kind of stretching um, regime that I'm now in mm. with meditation and stuff. And, and it does feel good. Having a structure mm. that is yours at the start of the day can be hugely productive later on in the day because you feel like you've just got that grounding and that start and i bet there's, there's mums watching right now which i can really identify who would say well that's just 
really impossible when you've got the school run or you've got toddlers and demands and I totally get that and actually I even though my two children are a bit older now um, I still struggle with that because in order to get up and meditate or do your intentions and be quiet but there's always the mum or questions you know here there and everywhere um, but the point I'm going to make is actually you can it, it's not going to be perfectly this but you can take elements of it because I tried this morning and what I've decided to do is do half of my kapha morning ease into the day when I wake up before the children are awake and I've got to remind them to get dressed for school. Then I do the school run and drive them in, remembering mentally to try and do that calmly and slowly and not get stressed by the traffic. And then when I drop them off, I stopped off at the Downs today and went for a little walk to finish off my kapha morning. So that was the first time I'd done that. But I, I suddenly thought, OK, what? because the trouble I have is that I come home straight after the school run even though I might have an hour left of my kaffir time till 10 or, or even longer than that, an hour and a half, I'll get distracted into kind of emails or, or tidying up the kitchen or whatever it might be, even though I know I should really go in the garden, but it's harder. So, so that's where I was a bit um, creative and I thought, well, I drive home past the downs, so why don't I stop off, even if it's just for 10 minutes, just to finish that morning preparation. And yeah, it's had to be um, what's the word, um, paused in, in, in the middle of it for the school run. But that's just the way things are. That's the role I've got at the moment. And um, But there's ways around it. You can, mm. you can be giving, clever about it. It's giving yourself it. permission as well. And I think it's not beating yourself up for the fact that you don't follow the rules 100%. Mm. You know, rules are guidelines. Rules are not something that, oh, if I don't do it, you know, religiously and, you know, completely perfectly, it's not going to work. It's mm. not like that. This kind of stuff is about exploration. It's about testing and really listening and kind of figuring out what works for you. And if you've only got 10 minutes and you can only find 10 minutes in your day to kind of really listen and just take a little pause and some time out, that 10 minutes is worth, it's like gold dust. It's so, so worth it. So, you know, if you've got the luxury of, you know, your time is your own and you can control you know the whole thing then great well done um but if it is that you know you're trying to juggle you know a very very busy lifestyle you will be able to find just trust me you will be able to find little small chunks of time where you can actually just reflect on this stuff and say is there something in it for me and if there is then maybe there's ways you can kind of build more of it into your life if there isn't and it doesn't work for you then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that certainly will so yeah. I think it's about giving yourself permission really, giving yourself permission it? having a go trying it out if it works great if it doesn't don't beat yourself up about it and at the end of the day it's all about learning about yourself isn't it so it's an opportunity to think well does that work for me or doesn't doesn't it and you're mm. going to learn something about yourself either way, aren't you? Mm. Which, as we know, is all about what we what we try and do, isn't it? Mm. To help people to get to know themselves and their rhythms and their energies much better. So what was the lady's name again? So Lisa Kofi. Now, I've written her name down as two S's in Lisa, L-I-S-S-A. That could be me being... You said S. No, S. Oh, Lisa. Lisa. Oh, right, sorry, I thought you said it was the surname. Um, yeah. So Lisa, two S's, okay, yeah. and I've got Kofi, C-O-F-F, two F's for Freddie, E-Y. Okay. I'm not sure if I've spelt Lisa right. You can Google right, it. But you I, Google if it. you put You'll in find her. Kofi, I'm sure I've spelt that right. And then Ava Dick. And Ava Dick, or Doshas, it will come up. You'll yeah. find her. Yeah. Great. So, yeah. So the other thing that we wanted to mention, this kind of thing, I don't think necessarily this specifically, but it could come into it and probably actually will come into it at some point. But this kind of thinking, these kind of techniques is something that we are, as you're probably aware already, um, introducing into the art of transformative living, which is our brand new recently launched uh, workshop program. Um, which begins on the 28th and 29th of June, the very first workshop, limited places because we want to keep it intimate and very personal mm. for the people who are there so we can give um, really a lot of attention to to everyone who does attend um, and so if you go to uh, the art of transformative living.com um, which is actually part of the mindful website uh, you can find all the details about the program but also the workshop 
Um, and it's this kind of exploration um, at, at a very sort of grounding level and finding what your base energies are and a whole bunch of other stuff that you can go and read about that. I mean, yeah, to, to be clear, we're not going to be um, covering doshas in the course. We, we might mention them, mightn't we, as a, like a little supplement, something coming, coming in at the side. But the topics we're going to be covering are things that we've really researched and know ourselves deeply. Mm. So I've been fortunate enough to work with the chakra system for a number of years, having been trained um, in Reiki back in 2007 um, and done a lot of other things since with the chakra system. So that's one of my specialties. And Neil's been working with archetypes and doing an online course, which is really in depth. So what's great is we're able to combine both our knowledge base and kind of lock it in together and give you all the best bits, the jewels and the gems really, um, and bring it together in a really concise, practical way to get to know yourself better and um, well, really bring vitality into your life and you, you, you'll be able to seek your true potential, which I think we all want to do, don't we? So, mm. um, so yeah, it's, it's a really really lovely combination of things um, and lots of practical things sandwiched in between the knowledge based sessions as well so, so lots of tools and techniques that you can learn yeah. develop and go away and explore and lots of fun as well so it's going to be a really fun? really great course Are we yeah fun? will there be time for fun yeah oh, okay there'll be time for Pitters fun just need fun <laughs> just need fun apparently um but pitters are really looking forward to life map which is one of the most significant tools of the program which is a past present and future visual representation of your life plan uh, but more about that another time but i'm really excited about that because that's something that's really evolved um, over recent years for, for both of us really in terms of like the journey that we're on um, so a lot of stuff to share with you on that one but that's that mm. to me is going to be a really exciting one because I love visual stuff so that really works for mm. me but um, anyway go to the art of transformative living.com if you're interested and uh, read more about that so yeah we'll hopefully see you there or um, we'll see you again on one of these chats thank Great. you for listening thank you very much we'll see you soon bye for now <laughs>